Hey, hey happy, happy campers. campers. Welcome to week 24. I think it's week 24. Yes. Here at Camp Shady Birch. It's my first week here at Camp Shady Birch being dirty 30. You are in your 30s now, you old sack of shit. How does it feel? Honestly, quite literally the same. Yeah. Yeah, nothing's really different. I feel that I've felt that way for, for quite some time. Because I feel like sometimes people are like, damn, like I'm 30. But I feel like, damn, like I've been alive my whole life. And I feel like it's been over 30 years. <laughs> I feel like you're in a really good spot, though. What yeah. do you think? You think you're like feeling it? I feel like this is a good time for you. I think so. I think so. We're we're stepping into 30 on a really high note. Higher than um, my 20s. I'll oh. say that. Well, that's good. New decade, yeah. new you. You have a great perspective on it. I'm so excited for you. We had a fun weekend celebrating Counselor Jonathan, everybody. Yes. Um, your birthday is February 18th. Correct. Which every is, year. Yeah, every year. Yes. <laughs> on Saturday, we were in Philly and we did this big 30th birthday for you and your friends. Rented out a little bar. We had a great time. So fun. Oh, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, we did replace our dead plant with, um, I was gifted an eye dog for my birthday. Shout out Rick and Catherine. And he's kind of, you know, taken over that little spot right there where the dead plant used to be. I put it over there. We got to figure out what to do with it. a funeral, maybe. The I eye dog know. came with a cute purse. Why didn't you keep it in the purse? Well, it, it didn't look like it didn't fit there with the purse. Maybe I'll go get it. All right. Maybe we'll do it in the next episode. But it did come in like a little purse with a with a Bluetooth adapter. Like they hooked it up for me. Yeah, that's sick. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, we had a great time at your birthday. It was really fun and we got to celebrate you. But I had a lot of fun the day before. Do you want to tell everybody what we did? So the day before on my, my exiting my 20s escapades, Zach planned out. This was so thoughtful. This is like the most thoughtful thing anybody's like done for me. You planned out like an entire day and you based it around like things. We, I think you were going to surprise me, but you couldn't really keep it to yourself. One thing about me, I can't hold a surprise in to save my life. It was like it was like three days before and I was like, can I just tell you what we're going to be doing? Because I wanted to make sure that you liked it and that you were into it. And there was a lot of components. It was a full day and I wanted to make sure that you were dressed appropriately True. and that you were happy because it was a full a full day. So here's how it went down. We um, got up early and I love the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. And it was mostly filmed in Manhattan. And when we're not at Camp Shady Birch, we're not that far from Manhattan. So we went to Ol and Steen, which is a, a Danish bakery. And I ordered myself a raspberry Danish. And I was quick to learn that they don't call it a Danish there. He's like, oh, uh, how do you say a spun, a spun hour? I think it was Greek or it was like a, it was like a Mediterranean bakery. So they, they were like, this isn't a Danish baby. Get with it. Regardless, I ordered that and a coffee that was the temperature of the sun. I don't drink hot coffee when I'm out and about because I'm usually a little hot and it was sticky out. It was like rainy. It was like humid out. So I got an iced coffee and I got a ham and cheese croissant, which I love a ham and cheese croissant. If you know me, I love a deli meat in the morning. Um, but this might've been a mistake. We'll get to that a little bit later. What did we do next after we got your coffee in Danish? So we got our breakfast and then we walked over to Tiffany's, like the Tiffany's that they filmed the opening scene of breakfast at Tiffany's at. And of course it's covered in scaffolding, which we didn't. <laughs> Well, you checked on Google Maps and you were like, there's scaffolding. I was like, yeah, that's probably wrong, though. That's probably old. But there was scaffolding there. Still didn't take away from the magic. I got my picture. I had my moment. I don't think I've ever seen as much scaffolding on a building in my entire life. Like, they built this out to the curbs. It was dark in there. It was like a little tunnel. And there was one sliver of the signage, like the metal plate on side of the building that you could take a picture in front of. It was not magical. You were being a really good sport about it. I was sad. I was like, come on. I just wanted you to have like a cute photo in front of it, not in a dark alleyway scaffolding tape mess. <laughs> and of course, like everybody who's walking by is like in a single file line because it's not the whole sidewalk. Everybody's kind of like trying to stay under it. Yeah, yeah. But I still had my moment and I still, it was special. It was fun. So I had my breakfast there. I got my photo and then we went to um, her apartment next, right? Yeah. Holly Golightly's apartment. So Holly Golightly's apartment, Audrey Hepburn from the movie was on like 71st Street. Got my photos there, which was awesome and magical. I think you're losing, you're losing some important detail here for, for the campers. You're breathing 
breezing through it, we need everyone to know that these were like 20 minute walks in between and it was 60 degrees and it was raining. So it would stop raining. The humidity was wafting up. My thighs are chafing together. They are on fire. And I'm just feeling slightly off during this entire process. I'm like, oh my God, we have to walk like, I don't know, like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. As if I didn't set the entire thing up. I was very aware of the walking, but I was feeling sweaty. I was feeling clammy. I was feeling kind of like ill. But Holly Golightly's apartment was pretty fierce. That was like a nice little moment. Um, but we were making the best of it. Yeah. And then we walked to Central Park. Uh, it was like a, a conservatory pond. I don't know what the pond was called. But it's in the movie, though. Yeah, it's in the movie. They filmed there. And as we got there, do you want to take over from this part? <laughs> okay, I, as a lot of you campers know, I have GI issues. I have IBS. I have a lot of stuff going on down there. And there was something about leaving too early in the morning, having a drink, walking around a lot, the caffeine, maybe the bad ham. We are walking into the park, you guys. Like, we're heading up to the conservatory pond. And Jonathan just wants a photo there. This is, like, the whole thing. It's a whole ordeal. And we're about to, like, come down this, like, little pathway. And I can't move. I am frozen in a panic. I am going to shit myself. Like, this is beyond stomach cramps at this point. This is, I am going to shit myself right here. I cannot take a step to the left. This is the to the right. Jonathan's like, there's bathrooms down there. I'm like, I can't make it down that hill right now, okay? I can't move it I'm anywhere. I'm looking at the bushes. Jonathan's like, what if you go shit in the bushes over there? I'm like, I can't shit in the bushes in Central Park. I'm going to get arrested and get labeled a sex offender because I have my GI issues. And at one point, I let something go in my pants and I thought it was poop. It was, it, long story short, it was not. It was just really bad gas. I, for a moment there, thought that I was going to shit myself. And I was like, Jonathan, just go get down there and get a picture. You tell everybody that you're like, you tell me you're like, oh, I got a picture. How was that picture, Jonathan? Let me just say, you were not being drama. Like you, I've never seen you like this before. Like we've had, we've had close calls with you before, but this was, <laughs> you were like, stop talking. I can't move. I can't move. I don't know what to do. And then I started panicking and you're like, just go get your picture. And at this point, I'm like, I would rather have you taken care of than get my picture of like a retention pond that I've seen in a movie from 1961. So I snap a picture really quick and I'm like, I'm good. I got it. I will put the picture up right here if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, not as magical as I anticipated, but you didn't shit your pants. <laughs> you know what it is too? It's like when you're stressed out, at least for me, this is like one of my like worst qualities. When I'm stressed, all Jonathan wants to do is help me. And all I want Jonathan to do when I'm stressing out is to shut up and like stop trying to problem solve because there is no problem solving when you're about to shit your pants. It's either happening or it's not. So you're going, but you being like, let's just walk over here. I'm like, just let me breathe through this as if it is a contraction during a pregnancy because there's no escaping this at this point. Luckily... The feeling, the feeling did subside for a little bit. And then from there... You snapped out of it and you're like, oh, I'm good. Like, let's just, let's go back to Holly's house. Okay. Like, what's good? No, because you don't, you're not an IBS survivor like me. An IBS survivor knows that a feeling like that comes in waves. And the first wave can almost overcome you like a tsunami. If you can survive it, that's amazing. But you need to know that it's not over. It is not over until you get to a bathroom. So as much as I could feel better, I knew that on the horizon, it was still an emergency. But I thought at that point we were like a 12 minute walk away from the Met Museum, the Metro Metropolitan Museum of Fine Arts in New York City, uh, Long Central Park. So I was like, we can make it there. But the minute we got to the museum, it was already coming back. Sprinting past mummies, historical artifacts that are probably at least like 100 years old. And we're sprinting past them so you can get to the bathroom. Do you feel like that when you have like an emergency in the bathroom, your body knows when you're close to a restroom yes. so it starts to like calm release. down release a little bit because i was fine until the minute we stepped through that little metal detector to get into the museum and i was like oh yeah. oh she's here she's knocking on death's door <laughs> and these mummies are about to see something they've never seen before yeah. in this exhibit maybe they have um no so i like ran to a attendant. i was like what's the closest bathroom he's like can i scan your ticket i'm like you can take my firstborn child that i need to get to that bathroom <laughs> oh but we made it yeah, we, made it. we did make it. Um, and then we spent the afternoon walking around the museum. What do you think about the museum? I want to hear your honest thoughts. I enjoyed it, but I think neither of us were in the headspace of a museum moment. We we did have to pull over to like work a little. We ended up sending like work emails, and then I feel like after that was when we kind of fell out of it. It was it was nice. I liked it. We didn't leave the first floor. We had a couple silly videos, and then. I was ready to go because I was hungry. I know. You looked at me and you're like, can we just go? And it was your birthday. And I was like, yeah, because I was like, oh, no, we should see the rest of it. But I was like, you know what? Like, you can't force yourself to be in the vibe of a museum. 
we had walked around all morning. I was chafing. I was sweating. I just had one of the worst close calls of my entire life. And you were just were hungry. And I was like, I'm with it. I lost my entire breakfast. It's already in the bowels of the New York City um, sewage system at this point. So I'm clear to go eat again. <laughs> um, so we walked out because it was just like nothing against the, the Met. I think it's a beautiful museum. Yeah. We weren't in that headspace and we're immature. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're walking around looking at the carved porcelain nut sacks of these incredible Greek statues. But once that was done, yeah. we couldn't look at fine art. We just couldn't. No. We couldn't. So we're walking through the catacombs. And of, we're, we're about to walk out. We're like walking towards the exit, but through... Uh, an exhibit through the mummies again because we circled back that way and we passed someone and jo Jonathan tell them what happened we walked past someone and I was like oh he looks really familiar and I was like wait I know who that was and I turned to you I was like I think that was Jason Biggs and we turn around and you're like oh we're gonna go find out if this is Jason Biggs because because you said that and I said I turned around and I saw I got a quick glance of his face I said that that's not that's not maybe Jason Biggs that is Jason Biggs and for you guys who don't know, what is he in? He's an American Pie. Orange he was is in Black. Orange is a New Black. Um, and yeah, a handful of other things. <laughs> but the main character in those movies, if you know who he is, you know who he is. Yeah. And he's a very distinct face. So we kind of circle back just to see if we can get a second glance at him. We weren't going to interrupt or anything like that. No. And he was like with a, a bunch of kids. I don't know if he was chaperoning. He with was. A, it looked like he may have been like chaperoning his kids. I like, don't know why every time we bring this part up, you're always like, he might have been chaperoning. What else would he have been doing? He had a clipboard with three other adults and a crew of children that were ushering through a museum he was absolutely chaperoning i don't know you keep like putting this up for debate he was guys i'm not letting this happen he was chaperoning his child's field trip and a little baseball cap thinking that we wouldn't recognize mr biggs but we did and he so he's holding a piece of paper that looks like a kid had drawn it i'm assuming a kid did draw and he didn't but who knows and he went to go he went to hold it up for some reason and as he goes like this he almost like punches me in the face and i had to duck out of the way because there was a little a little aqueduct to the right of me i was like oh sorry I don't know why I was apologizing, but yeah, Jason Biggs almost hit me in the face and it was the best day of my life. You walked away and you were like, I can't believe I just apologized to Jason Biggs. <laughs> I know. The last day of my 20s too. It was just, ugh, it was just incredible. It was a dream. So then we left the museum and we headed towards lunch. I don't know what was going on. Now it was pouring rain in the city and the wind was whipping at 150 miles an hour. I'm not even joking. We're leaving the, the, the museum and the rain is going, it's going horizontal at this point. It was an afternoon monsoon. I've never seen rain whip like that. Like I, it was pelting us. So we're hiding under scaffolding again. The only time I want to see scaffolding today is that point, not at Tiffany's. And whatever, we ended up getting to lunch. We have a great lunch. It really was a great lunch. We it was. Fantastic it lunch. was. It was really good. Yeah. And then we um, were like, we have some time before the rest of our night. So let's just do a little bar hopping. We go to one bar. It's okay. We go to the second bar. It's a gay bar. It's a piano bar. It was a cool bar, but there was a little issue at this bar. What was that issue? Okay. The bartender was visibly ill and he was referring to it as his allergies i'm thinking it was beyond that he would excuse himself from this very quiet freshly opened up bar with one other patron besides me and jonathan and then blow his nose into something it sounded medical it was giving urgent care it was giving i need you to triple rinse these hands with soap and warm water and to put some gloves on in a mask he was a nice man we ended up talking he, to him yeah, he was, it was great it was definitely not allergies he it was, was giving like he needed to reduce his PPO high monthly premium health insurance that day. Like, get him to the Greek. Let's get him to Gray Sloan Memorial. <laughs> let's get him to like. Let's get him to some sort of allergy shot. I don't know what it was. It was it was kind of grody. I thought at one point I was like I finished my drink and it was like that weird intro where you weren't finished yours yet and I was waiting for you because I was like ready to go and you were like you just ordered more drinks. I was like okay, well I mean well, hey if we're if we're here we're here. He was nice and I feel like at that point he already infected us into whatever he had. He was a great bartender. If you've never gone to a gay bar, guys, it's to go to a gay bar is to know that you get like. Like, let's say you get like a, a, a vodka soda. That drink is going to be 98% vodka. And they're both they're basically going to like just waft a little sparkling water on top of it and say, good luck, girly. So the drinks were great. They were cheap. And I was hammered by the time we left there. Same. And then we got an Uber. We went to dinner and we were drunk at dinner. I don't know how you felt. Yeah. I was drunk at dinner. I was drunk at dinner, but it was still good. It was great. And I was trying to play sober and the, the server was like, would you like some more bread? And I was like, I think we both know. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm shit faced. You know what I order? A French onion soup, mussels, and a creme brulee. Nothing was filling up this stomach. I was that. Oh, I needed a burger. I needed a fish and chip. I needed something substantial. 
Why did I get a soup and mussels? I don't know. I didn't really think about that till now. I was like, you really didn't eat that much when we were there, did you? No, you it was good. Did that was you? Good food. I thought you ate light too. You had a bisque. Bitch had a I bisque. had a bisque. A birthday bisque, for, if you will. A birthday, <laughs> I had a birthday bisque. I don't remember what I got for dinner. Pasta of some sort. No, I got ratatouille. You got ratatouille. I didn't even get... I said, just give me the most vegetable-based plate that you got. Plate that you got. <laughs> it was Lake good, Rivage. though. I love ratatouille. It's okay, so, so where did we end up the night? What was the last thing on so, your exit of your 20s? And the last thing we did was we went to go see Little Shop of Horrors, which I was super excited about because I had never... I'd seen the movie, never seen the play. I had rehearsed the dance of the opening number in my my childhood best friend, Kelly, in her front yard. I, I put on a play for everyone else in the neighborhood, but never actually saw it. And Maude Apatow was going to be, was in it. Yeah, Maude Apatow's daughter played Audrey. She is Judd Apatow's daughter, Leslie Mann's daughter. She's yeah. also been in Euphoria. She plays Lexi. She's a big star. And I think that was the big draw, at least for me. I was like, oh, I really want to see Maude do this. And I knew that you loved the movie. I'd never seen the movie, but I understood it's about that killer Venus flytrap. I got the visuals of it, but I wasn't really aware of the storyline. It was off-Broadway, so it was kind of intimate setting, which was nice, which off-Broadway in New York really means it's like, it's pretty close though it's like okay what are we three blocks over yeah. smaller place but it was a really cute theater it was what did you think of the production so i thought it was fun i thought the set was really fun i loved the, the set v- was fun audrey to the the um plant was giving the plant was giving it was great they had like six people operating it. it was huge it was fun um i thought the production like the performances were good there were a couple of things that i was like oh it's just off broadway it's whatever but i overall i really enjoyed it i had a good time what did you think? I didn't love it. I, I'm only here to be honest with our campers, guys. I Maybe it's because I didn't know the storyline enough. To me, I'm going to be dead ass with you guys. We've seen a lot of shows, as you know, okay? And I can't sit here and tell you every single one was amazing because then you wouldn't believe me. This one for me was giving high school production, okay? Mod, love you, girl. I needed more, okay? There were some real songs. Like, what's the song I was like, Suddenly Seymour? Yeah. She was just staring at him the entire time. I'm like, girl, pop your shoulder up. Pop a pussy. Do something, girl. I just need some more jazz. The three girls in the beginning, all separately, like the, they're kind of like the, I don't know, the backup singers and the narrators yeah. kind of the whole time. They're like the Supremes. The they're Supremes, supposed to be. Right? These three very talented women individually, when they came together as a trio, I wasn't feeling it. It felt yeah. like they were competing with each other. And I was like, where is the unification? It felt like it was a competition and not like for the betterment of the show. Moving forward. The dad. Okay. I know you're 65 and you're playing a character that's an older character. I need more skill. Okay. This is Broadway, baby. Shake them fucking shoulders and give me more. I thought Seymour was amazing. I thought the dentist was amazing. I thought the way that the visuals were amazing. Audrey was lacking. Supremes were lacking. And the owner of the flower shop were lacking. Overall, I'm giving it a five out of 10. Oh, wow. And thank God it would have, because it, it, this is the ultimate, the pinnacle of stage productions, okay? I shouldn't be able to think about how, like, I've seen things in my local community theaters that have been better. Mm. You know what I mean? New Bedford, Zyterian traveling production show of Hairspray from 2013 blew my fucking socks off. And I still think about that show to this day. And then I'm seeing something on off-Broadway, Mod Apatow, Okay. You're giving nepotism, baby. You're giving like you don't deserve to be there. I'm sorry. I said it. I said it. I did. She wasn't good enough to be there. I've seen way better performers, but the way that they showed that, um, what is it? The Venus flytrap. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Like the way they they showed that was amazing. Yeah. I I think you can agree with some things that I'm saying. I can agree. I feel like definitely the three girls, when they were on stage together, it felt like they hadn't been on stage together yeah. individually. You're correct. They did good. But all together, it was like, hey, let's get some WD-40. This machine's not running properly. I know. But you, ha- honestly, the fact that you left and you were glowing and you were floating around the street, I was like, I'm glad that you love it. And then we're like waiting for an Uber. And this man come up to me, clearly someone with a mental health crisis going on. He was like trying to pick a fight with me. I don't know what was going on. He was just like, eh, 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 like, like not even speaking English. And I like, looked at him and I said, sir, I'm not doing this right now. And I walked away. Okay. I'm looking for an Uber and you're looking for a fight and I'm not giving you one. So <laughs> we walked away. We took an Uber home. Oh, that was a, a mess. That was a, I was kind of like half asleep, but half awake. 
Um, what did we get when we got food? Did we deliver when we got home? We, oh, we got <laughs> we, we door dashed to McDonald's. Oh, why are you laughing as if we don't do that a lot? Like, no, I know because I'm thinking that was my, that was the last meal of that day. Which I don't know. It just you it was that. very yeah. It was very on brand. I'm not complaining. It was it was great. It was just fun because like on paper when I had this whole day planned, it seemed like it was going to be magical. But then from the chafing, from the sweatiness, from the sick bartender, from the scaffolding, from the diarrhea, from the drunk dinner, from the okay show to the the guy yelling at us in the streets, having McDonald's. It was very on brand for what we do and what we love. And I, I really hope you had a good day because I did. I thought it was fun. Like Frank Sinatra said, we did it our way. We did it our way. Well, I just want to say happy birthday. Thank you. It's been a fun weekend celebrating you. And I think you've gotten a lot of love and I'm happy. Yes, I have. And thank you everybody who wished me a happy birthday. I appreciate you and I love you. Cheers to a new year and cheers to a new era. We love you, Counselor Jonathan. 30, flirty, and thriving. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, bonus content is here. Shout out to the current 121 Patreon supporters who have signed up to get bonus content from us, including vlogs that you're not going to see anywhere else and bonus episodes, patreon.com slash camp counselors. I know. Welcome everybody from Cabin 5. Cabin 5 is our little interior crew of people on Patreon. And it's been really fun. If you are a part of that, thank you for commenting and having a good time with us. So we've had some fun posting it. And if you're interested, it's linked. It's linked in the episode description and we're just having a good time with it. So obviously we're going to plug it. Let us be. Okay. So we got. So moving on, morning announcements. Do uh, do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I can go first. Okay. Go okay. On. So this was a really funny article. It's not really funny, but I liked it. Okay. So I'll read you the episode title. I mean, the article title. It was from Business Insider by Aaron McDade. Jeff Koons' balloon sculpture, valued at over forty thousand dollars, accidentally shatters at Miami Art Festival. Mm. Are you familiar with Jeff Koons? Yes. So if for those of you who don't know, he's a very popular artist, and he does a lot of like surrealist sculptures or like really like real realistic sculptures. Actually say and he's most popular for these like balloon animals that he does and they kind of range from like one foot tall all the way to, like 10 feet tall and they're sold all over the world so there was a vip art um preview at this place art winwood which is like a big art festival in florida and um they had this like kind of cocktail hour going on and jeff coons had pieces there he wasn't there but they were selling his pieces there and an art collector kicked the pedestal during the fair's opening cocktail hour on thursday evening people were kind of shuffling around and i saw pictures of it we'll post it here and it's kind of like a glass box almost very clear and obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a, like you know it's been clean right and this little blue balloon animal dog is sitting on top of it she's kind of mingling through a crowd she kicks the pedestal and the entire sculpture crashes onto the ground they're made of porcelain by i was the way. just gonna ask what they were made of porcelain it's a kind okay. of glassy porcelain or whatever yeah. and um it shatters right oh. so this art collector i don't know why i feel like it's a girl i don't know if i heard a pronoun somewhere but i feel like it's a woman i don't know i'm not making that up i don't think but whatever this person like knocks it over and they're panicking mm -hmm. and then a crowd kind of comes around because they kind of some people were saying they thought it was a performance piece. Oh. They're like, oh my God, <laughs> what's happening next? But um, long story short, it was not. <laughs> um, but the people at oh, the Art no. Winwood, they're not upset. Apparently, okay. they had insurance. Okay, good. Thank God. So it was valued at $42,000. Um, and this piece was insured. And I think most of these things are, right? So they're like, hey, like shit like this does happen. And like, it's it's unfortunate. But like, what can you do? And some people there were like, hey, this might bring more value to the piece if they like sell it. Because now this piece has a very individual story. So this... Art is... I'm sorry. Art... That, like, that concept of that... I know. Increasing it in value is absolutely insane. It's like... I'm not trying to devalue his art, but who's putting the price tag on it first off? Second off, like if you have it in pieces and where you just put it in a little box and you're like, it's now $140,000. Right, exactly. And it's like, well, of course it is because this happened to it. Well, maybe they were just saying that to make that girl feel better. Maybe. God, I'd be embarrassed. I. I that's like the the pinnacle of embarrassment for me would be that like, knocking over an art piece. It feels like an episode of That's So Raven. I literally, did that happen on the show? Uh, probably. It, it was definitely in the writer's room at some point. Oh, wait, yeah, because uh, Raven had to dress up, like, herself as a sculptor of the Raven, remember? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. It just feels very, like, Yeah, it was Disney very cartoony. Raven. But when we were at the mat, I was thinking that, too. I was like, oh, my God, like, hands behind your back. Do not, like, touch anything because I'm going to yeah. break this 
sculpture that's been around since, you know, the beginning of time. Well, um, if you are curious about the values of these kind of pieces, this was one piece of a collection of 799 identical pieces that are up for sale. 798. Um, yeah, 798. And I was thinking like, okay, like hypothetically, they all can't be valued at the exact same amount. Maybe some have different colors or whatever, but let me just kind of shoot my shot here and do some math for everybody listening. That would be $33 million on just this little collection alone of 800 of the same pieces. This man is fine if he doesn't sell this one piece. He already got the insurance. I can't believe $33 million. It doesn't even seem that rare if there's 800 of them at that point. You know? Yeah. How cool can it really be if there's 800, 800 of them? Yeah. Anyways, sorry, Jeff Koons. Um, some love you. I'm okay. I'm okay about you. Like, I'm just okay about you. Like, I'm just okay about you. I was just going to say about the performance art where everybody thinks it's like, oh, what's going to happen next? Like, this is all a performance. It's very much like, um, I know what you did last summer where uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar is like on stage and she's screaming. She's like, he's behind you. Because like, they think she's performing. Yes, yes, but Everybody's yes. like, yes, girl, you better go. And she's like, no, literally like, he's right there. And everyone's like, the performance of a lifetime, Sarah Michelle Gellar. The moral of the story is everybody just wants to be entertained. And don't touch things on display. So what you got, Jonathan, for everybody today? So this article is coming from The Bounce 96.5 radio website. It's an article by Joe Winner, and it's titled Miami, Florida woman has her headshot sold to a stock photo site, and now she's on the cover of an erotic novel titled His Big Childhood Sweetheart. That is a long title. Yeah, so break it down for me, please. There's this woman. Uh, her TikTok username is christian.joy.t. D. And she posted this video um, a couple of weeks ago, and it says it's with text reading, thinking about the one time I didn't read the fine print on my headshots contract and my photographer sold my pictures to stock photo sites. And then she green screens herself over like the same photo. And she's revealing the, the adult oh, novel still, cover. She still had the original prints to kind of be like, this is my print and this is how they used yeah. it. Oh, God. Yeah. And then she did go on to tell a story time that was like a couple parts long. Um, so basically what happened was back in 2010, she had um, graduated and she had a theater degree and she needed some new headshots. So she met up with a photographer in a Bayside Park. And she said she took photos in different tops and paid him $100 and everything seemed good. For me, like $100, like that seems even in 2010, like that seems like a little bit of a red flag to me right there. So she used these photos hoping to, you know, get work as an actress. But what she didn't do was read through the contract all the way because later the photographer would sell her photos to stock image sites. And since she had signed off on the contract, she had signed them away, basically. And she ended up on Getty Images, as many people do. And um, then I guess someone who was writing an erotic novel ended up putting her on the cover of this book. I believe it's the like Amazon, um, like you can pub self published where you can kind of just like type it up, put it in some sort of book and like publish it digitally. And they'll just print it or whatever. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's <laughs> this book is actually number 10 out of 24 in the series Plus Size Loving Billionaires by author Samantha Drake on Amazon. It is 249 pages. And here's a description of that book. After spending a few years abroad, Damien Carter is ready to get serious about his family's business, but when he reunites with his childhood friend, that friendship turns into something more. Sorry, my cursor was in the way. <laughs> Things are bound to get complicated, especially since his friend is the daughter of the family's maid. The scandal, can you believe? Evelyn longs to be with Damien, but the differences in their social status always has held her back. Yet now that Damien has returned, no longer a boy, but a man, she can no longer deny what's in her heart. But what will happen when Damien's family catches wind of their relationship? Will Damien and Evelyn be forced to break it off? Or will love find a way? Find out in this emotional yet sexy romance by Samantha Drake of BWWM Club. It says it's not typed properly. Suitable for people 18 and up due to sizzling hot sex scenes. Um, that sounds incredible. Something tells me they're going to get together in the end. I don't know. Call it my third eye, but I'm pretty sure I know the ending of this novel. Honestly, the most 
entertaining thing about that is probably her, her I think her story is more entertaining than what the book's going to give but if you like that kind of stuff guys look it up yeah let me just let me just you know tease you with a couple of other titles from Samantha Drake's series that oh. I'm dying to get my hands on his big city girl his beautiful surrogate and his big 43 year old beauty she got a thing for a small man big girl relationship yes hey well if you love that you love that and she's got enough content to go around that's a long book too to be that many long books yeah oh my god she has so many and i'm i'm a slut for smut so i might just i might just make the purchase i don't know but that author is samantha drake she is my colleen hoover she is my jrr tolkien (laughs) i love that Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to the Gossip Dock. This is the part of the show where listeners like you can submit stories, some little tea, some juice, something you just want to talk about and that we can share with other campers. And this one is a really good one. I know I always say that, but we were in bed a couple nights ago and the the email title, I was like, oh my God, we have to read that one now. We have to read that one now. And it is so funny, you guys. So it's a good one for sure. Without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. Hey, counselors, do I have some tea for you? This past weekend, I attended a bachelorette party in Vermont with 18 women. We rented an MTV crib-style home that included an indoor pool, hot tub, bar, and a 46-seat movie theater with a stage. What the bride did not know was that we had booked her a stripper. Not just any old stripper, a wizard stripper. Our bride is a hot, tall, blonde lass who loves a little magic in her life. She's a major Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter fan, so we thought this would be a hilarious surprise. I love this. I a love wizard stripper. I love a stripper at a bachelorette party always. I think it's so fun. I know it's like people hate it now and it's like getting really trashy, but I just think it's like hysterical and funny. So a wizard stripper I'm obsessed with. Okay. <laughs> One of the girls coordinated with the lady pimp Trish and got a confirmation that our stripper would arrive at 12.30 a.m. After a long day of drinking and bachelorette shenanigans, we received a confirmation text from our wise wizard that his magic wand would arrive here at 12.25 a.m. <laughs> on the way back to the Airbnb from the bars, our bride began to feel ill. We were all freaking out trying to sober her up and to make sure she was alert enough for her guest Dumblehore. <laughs> Dumblehore. <laughs> when, we when we arrived home, the bride was on the brink of vomiting and demanded to put her pajamas on. She told us she just wanted to go to bed, but we knew she'd be so bummed if she missed her stripper moment. We decided to tell her about the surprise, and he was only three minutes away. She instantly perked up and was ready to rally in her jammies. How sobering. Well, I know, but I'm glad that she didn't like miss it because I would have been like, okay, girl, like you can't go to sleep because this is why. And she's like, whatever, as long as I can do it in my pajamas, I'm in. The stripper rang the doorbell and was wearing rip away patched up jeans, an Aeropostale zip up hoodie and a white tank top. We showed him the movie room where he would be performing and offered him some shots of tequila. <laughs> he quickly changed into his cloak, wizard hat and long gray beard. The bride came down the stairs in pure joy. We sat her down in a chair in the middle of a stage and handed her a wad of $1 bills. The stripper began the night with the intro song to Harry Potter, which got the crowd going. (laughs) That's like hysterical. I'm familiar with the song. He quickly removed the wizard costume, which instantly... (laughs) He quickly removed the wizard costume, which we instantly wish he would have put back on. Oh. (laughs) He ripped away his jeans and we were left with his pot belly, Tiger King thong, and black worker boots. He... (laughs) He evidently went to the tanning bed before he arrived because his butt crack burn lines were the star of the show. (laughs) His dance moves needed some refining to say the least. He was really into sniffing and quickly thrusting his flat ass. Oh, (laughs) flat ass. He (laughs) He was really into sniffing and quickly thrusting his flat ass on any body part. At one point, he flipped the bride upside down and began to shake her as if he was trying to get the change out of her pockets. (laughs) He later busted out a vino hand lotion and squirted it on one of the girl's hands. (laughs) Wow. He's got got some tricks up his wizard sleeve. I volunteered to go up and he had me face the audience. He picked me up in a way that made me feel like I was Jesus Christ himself being hung on the cross. Mm. Needless to say, this C minus stripper made our weekend. We sent him home on his way with a cupcake, a bag of popcorn, and a bottle of water for his ride home. This once-in-a-lifetime experience left us gagging. 
love a camper who was duped by Dumble Whore from Cabin 12. I love that. If this story couldn't be funny enough, campers, the pictures to go along with it just are icing on the cake. So thank you so much to this camper who sent this in. We are like, oh, I was laughing hysterically in bed when we were reading this. I'm like, this is so awesome. <laughs> Me too. And we do have, a. there's quite a few uh, not safe for work photos. So we'll put them on the Patreon patreon.com slash camp counselors if you want to go check it out but that is incredible and one of the pictures does include those burnt ass cheeks i like that he had like the means to be like or the motive to be like you know what i'm gonna try to step up my game here and tan for these ladies but oh my god the costume is so bad yeah and the reveal even worse i think it's cool that they had a stage in this like insane airbnb because ever, all the other like girls from the party could like just sit in the audience 46 seats in, yeah. a, in a house like what do you need that for it's so they said it was in what was, was it in vermont yeah so it's definitely like in a ski town i'm sure but like there's no need for like the ski town the ski like house to fit that many people but i mean go off hey. but that is saucy saucy the saucery the saucery of this story <laughs> That was our gossip talk. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. It's time for Take a Hike, the part of the show where we talk about the things that have been grinding our gears and we bitch a little. So the things that have been grinding my gears as of lately, songs with whistles in them. There is one exception, but I don't know what it is. But anytime there's a whistle in a song, like my brain, it's a red flag and I, I want to throw it in the bin. A couple of songs, Moves Like Jagger. In the bin. Wait, you can't just say you have to tell me what the whistling part of the song is. I can't think of it. In um it moves, moves like, like Jagger. I don't know. The very beginning where it's like Okay, so you're basically you're telling the campers right now that your take a hike was this, was a setup to show everybody how good you are at whistling because that was a dead on like reenactment of that. Oh my god, I didn't even whistle that loud. Thank you. You know, I didn't... I think I'm into it actually. Maybe I am into it too. Wow, you have me like glowing with that review. Maybe I'll do. That's my new karaoke song, just <laughs> so I can get up there and whistle into a damn mic. I'm sorry, keep going. But uh, good life by One Republic. Can I get the... I need the whistle again. I'm sorry. I, I don't know the whistle part, but it's like, oh, oh this is gonna, gonna be a good life. Yeah. Th and then it's pretty much like that melody is carried through whistling. Okay. Uh, the Lazy Song by Bruno Mars. I don't like it. It makes my skin crawl. I will say that's the first example you've given out of this list where I do get the ick from. I that's what it is. The ick. I don't like it in that song. Bruno Mars overall is a little corny to me. He's a talented man, but I keep going. I do. I see it in that one, though. I agree. Like, I can you just imagine like Bruno Mars in the recording studio putting his lips together and just like blasting it into a microphone? Do you think Thomas Edison, the inventor of the phonograph... <laughs> would have been proud that this is what his life's work came to. Listen, they didn't have they didn't have the 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 beauty of auto tune back then. So I think you would have hated it back then because they probably were whistling more than they are now. Also, even the Jonas Brothers, the sucker song, which I for a long time thought was Shawn Mendes. I thought that was a Shawn Mendes song. I'm a sucker for you. Yeah, but they they, they whistle, whistle in that, and I don't like it. That was a good impersonation of of Nick I'm Jonas. Not, so that sounded good. I'm not good. remembering the whistles in these songs like you are. Yeah, well, when you hear it, you can't unhear it, and I I hate it. But the only exception I have, um, ironically, is the song "Whistle" by Flo Rida, which fully gets the pass because he's talking about whistle and teaching you how to whistle. I like, think that, ooh, I like that ooh, one. Ooh. That's a good one. But you know what though? I think this is a little offensive because you do know that at Camp Shady Birch, we have the seven time world ranking whistler. Yeah. As our as our groundskeeper. Well. Sandwich the editor right now. He is behind the camera in tears essentially <laughs> because his best skill in life is whistling and you are so offensive. Can you please apologize to Sandwich? Sandwich, I'm sorry. And you know what? You you deserve the award that you were awarded, but I don't want to hear it on Spotify. Okay. I don't. Let me hear you whistle, baby. Whistle, baby. Let me know. Okay, well, I... But that's my take a hike. <laughs> it's okay. It's your take a hike. I'm sure there's other campers out here. So campers, let us know if you also hate whistling. Um, very specific, but I can feel you on it. Thank you. What's... uh? What's your take a hike? Ugh, I'm not into this food trend at all. What do you guys think about deconstructed food? Mm. Deconstructed food to me, it reads as lazy, sloppy, boring. Okay. If I order a Caesar salad and you put a head of romaine there, a little rambic and a Caesar dressing and some croutons on the side and expect me to build it. 
Okay. Where I'm coming out to eat. So you cook for me. Okay. And this whole idea of like, oh, it's supposed to that you can, you can experiment in different varieties of the food. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. If it was good, it should have been pre-made and brought to my table. Okay. Don't bring me no deconstructed stick tartare cheesecake bullshit. Okay. I came here to enjoy a nice meal, not for them to put the ingredients on a plate and say, voila, deconstructed. It's just, ugh. it's just, it's a little too pretentious for me. And it's only the ritziest of titsiest places that do it now. Well, how do you feel about a fajita? No, no, no. Don't even start with me right now because that was offensive. Fajitas are a build your own fantasy. Okay. Okay. That's different. <laughs> they don't advertise fajitas as deconstructed. You're right. That's in its origin and its belief system. Don't do that to me right now. <laughs> I was going to say, because in about an hour, we're going to be at a Chili's and I will be ordering that sizzling vagina. Yeah, I have a Chili's ad due. I have to do that after this, guys. But that's different. Okay. okay? You remember the deconstructed um, bullshit? Tomato. Oh, that was bullshit on the cruise. Yeah. The deconstructed tomato caprese salad. I said, bitch, get the hell out of here with this bullshit mess. All right. I just think it's lazy. Hold on. I have to look at my notes. Someone put this into words, and I, I'm gonna. This was taken off of a, a blog. I'm not crediting you. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry, but it's not my own information. So <laughs> reverse Google this. The purpose is that you can customize your bites and rearrange your flavors. Most constructed dishes work because it's the combination and ratio of ingredients that make them work. The skill in the dish is getting these things right. By deconstructing it, the chef abdicates responsibility for getting the balance right. <laughs> Chefs are abdicating the responsibility of getting their flavors right and putting it onto the consumer. And I think that's bullshit. Lazy. Sloppy. Boring. I hate deconstructed meals. Get out of here with that bullshit. Am I getting, are, are we like, are you getting me? Am I like I'm getting weird? it. I okay. get it. No, you're not weird. I understand where this frustration is coming from. Keep it in the kitchen. Constructed in the kitchen. It feels like the art of presentation is stepping in the way of the meal itself mm -hmm. because it feels like that's like kind of like the deconstructed. You can already think it's like that tomato drizzle and like little, little like I don't know, little peppercorns everywhere. I I get it. It's gorgeous, but at the end of the day, did it, it did it wow me? And I will say this. Now think about this. If you're if you're still on the fence with this, guys, this is a good one. Have you ever had a deconstructed meal? like a version of something, and that be better than your favorite version of it constructed. Can I have an example? Like if you've had a Caesar salad and then a Caesar salad that's deconstructed. Oh, wait, so maybe you didn't hate that deconstructed version, but was it better than it being constructed? No, it's never better. Like a salad bar? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, do you see what I'm saying though? I see what you're saying. Like a, okay, yes. a deconstructed like cheesecake and they have the, the bread crumb crumb over here and the cheesecake here and the fruit on the side. Okay, maybe it was like good, but was it better than the best version I've had of it constructed? No. no. It wasn't. No. You know, I'm very passionate about food campers mm -hmm. and this goes on my list. I don't like it. I'm sloppy, lazy, boring. Have you ever had a deconstructed cake? What the raw it, egg and the and the and the and the funfetti mix and the little bowl? It's two eggs and a cup of water, <laughs> and they bring it out to you on a plate. <laughs> you know what I want to say about that, real quick? Yeah, I'm gonna start putting milk or heavy cream in for the water in these cakes. What's the what's the worst that's gonna happen? It's gonna be creamier. Mm. It's gonna be moister. Yeah, and grow up with that whole. Oh, I don't like the word moist. That's another take a hike. I'm doing two. It's a word. It's a word. You don't want a dry cake. You want a moist cake. And I'm going to say it in your microphones. I'm going to say it in your headsets. Moist. Grow up. It's a word. So I'm going to start putting milk in instead of water and just see what happens. We do have a cake downstairs. We can do the, the Dolly Parton cake. Oh, wow. We are just blowing up with the fattest ticks on the East Coast right now, but less. Yes. Let us make more cake. Guys, have you noticed we're getting fat? You're not. You look amazing, actually. You don't gain weight. I, I do, on the other hand, my chins are getting their own zip codes tomorrow. It's going to oh. be a, a ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm blowing <laughs> up over here. But yes, we'll make that Dolly Parton cake and we'll let you know how it was. Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. It's time for Camper Crush of the Week. Como se dice? <laughs> 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 
Como se dice kissy kissy goo goo ga ga? So what have we been crushing on? What have we been liking? What have we been into? Who have we been crushing on? Who have we been liking? Who have we been into? Jonathan, take us away. So mine is a, a side of TikTok that I ended up on that I forgot existed like uh -huh. a year ago. And I stumbled upon it at four o'clock in the morning a couple of days ago when I couldn't sleep. It was like three days before my birthday and I was having a little bit of a crisis mentally. So I was like, let me just sit and just scroll on things that are relaxing and I don't have to think too much about home cafe videos. Amen. So home cafe talk, if you just literally look up home cafe, they're like these aesthetically pleasing beverages that people make usually in a little glass and they're they're either like coffee based or sometimes milk based you might like it for your cake juice based juice based it's like mocktails it's usually like not alcoholic so it's mixology minus the alcohol it usually is anti alcohol well sometimes yeah. but for the most part yeah and they usually use the the either like weird spherical ice or the good ice the what tiny is that ones good ice? i want that little cube yeah it's tiny oh my god rich i have it in my uh my amazon cart because i was like i could do this like this would be a fun activity for me so i do have it in my amazon cart maybe i'll just hit that purchase Oh my but, God, let's have an ice review. That's so fun. You know what it makes me think of? I don't want to cut you off. What? But the dark ice that um, that um, Latasha likes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, when we were on the cruise, Latasha was telling us, she was like, the dark ice. See how this one's dark? It's it's medium rare. You need a light. It has to be light ice. No, I think she likes dark ice. No, it was light ice. Oh, it was? the light ice is the airy one. It's the chewy one. Wegmans, they have great ice at Wegmans, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, there's a lot of different versions of ice. And in these videos, this is the creme de la creme of mm -hmm. ice in your videos. Because also they'll take like the colored juices and they'll make ice with it and then add that to make it look like this like absolutely stunning drink you got like botanicals in there and shit but i feel like if i was going to make them and you know i, th I think i would like to try to make them because they do like gradients like they they'll do like a bunch of different colors in one glass i'm like how did they do that because i feel like if i did it it would look like you who yeah it seems like it's less about the flavor combination and more about the aesthetics like you need to have um, like a granite countertop, you need to have the most stunning natural light you've ever seen in your entire it's life. It's gotta be sunlight, direct sunlight. I'm looking for metal tongs. Yeah. I'm looking for floral petals. Yes. I'm looking for just- The glasses that have the ridges in them. We have beautiful glassware. We do have beautiful Thank glassware. Thank you, April. Yes, April, my friend <laughs> hooked us up with a lot of beautiful glassware. She has. But I just, I don't know, I find it relaxing. And I'm not super into like ASMR, that doesn't really do it for me. I don't get the, the tingles as people say, but just yeah. watching these videos without music and just like hearing the ice and the little pores and stuff, I do enjoy. Which is interesting too, because something that also bothers me similar to the way that my body reacts to whistling in songs is hearing a commercial on the radio where they're trying to convey like a tantalizing beer mostly or like a pepsi where it's like and then you hear it fill the glass like i don't like that oh i love that i don't and for some reason in these videos i do like that so i don't know what's up with me i'm 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 only 30 years old i'm still i'm still learning new things about myself but um but yeah i've been crushing on home cafe sides of tiktok i think you should start making some i think that'd be fun i think your dorito pickles are the complete anti home cafe version of yeah. what these videos yeah. are. So I think you have an appreciation for things that you don't necessarily make. I think that would be fun. Yeah, maybe I should try making something like cute for once. That's yeah. a good idea. No, I love I love what you do. I think it's so you. But I just think it's funny that you make Satan's assholes in these little pickle jars. <laughs> and then you go on, you're like, and I'm going to watch a lavender spritz. People have like reported them like as a joke. I'm like, and I kind of want to say. Don't they dare. I want to say in the comments, like, please stop reporting this because I think it's funny. But if I say that, you know. People will. People will like report it. And it, it's like funny in the moment. But I'm like, hey, that's my like my livelihood. My income is coming from these crazy pickles I'm making. So please don't report them. Thank y'all. But that's what that. I've been crushing on. Cute. What have you been crushing on? Um, I've been crushing on a very new man, okay? And I have gotten Jonathan's clearance to have a crush on this man. It's not a sexual crush. It is a crush of admiration and joy and love. Don't act surprised for the cameras when I didn't already brief you on this one, okay? I for I'm forgetting who it was. The crush of the week for me is Mr. David Woolley. Um, Woo! 
Mm -hmm. If you don't know who David Woolley is, everybody, this is Christine Brown's newly announced boyfriend. Christine Brown from the Sister Wives. You girls know I'm obsessed with the Sister Wives. Christine Brown, like a week ago, I posted out my story. She announced on her car confessions that she had a man in her life and she was super happy with him. And then like a week later, she dropped it. But I think it was getting leaked by some of the family members. And I knew before she initially announced it because I follow some Sister Wives T blogs and there was this account that he made he recently made a Facebook um, an Instagram account. He only followed four people, one of them being Christine. She followed the account, was liking his post. So yes, Christine Brown has a new boyfriend. What do we know about him? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> he owns a drywall company in Utah. Oh, important. So he is ra rather close. I'm assuming they met online, maybe a mutual friend. He has eight children. Oh, wow. He's a widower. Oh. Oh. And he's a grandfather. I like that he has eight kids. Yeah, the, pen I, the penis works. I feel like, well, that's true. I feel like she's always surrounded herself by big families, her own family. She herself has, I think, six kids. So I think that makes sense. She's a grandmother. He's a grandfather. He loves, loves, loves his family. And he loves her. Um, I'm going to read you a little Instagram post that he put in the caption about her. When I'm with you, we just sit in our own little bubble and the world can go around us and we're just standing still and it's perfect and I've never felt like this before. When I took you to the Little Mermaid play, I saw how much you love life and I knew I had someone special for me. I'm the luckiest guy. Thank you for finding me. Love, your king. Oh, I have goose, but literally full body tells what's happening right now. It makes me emotional too because I just... She deserves the fucking world. She is such a beautiful person. And I'm so happy she found someone who loves and respects her because Cody has been a menace to her entire life, has said awful things to her and is pretending like it didn't matter. And she's found someone that's treating her like the queen that she is. And I'm just so happy that she's happy. And I'm, he's my curse of the week because he's making the queen of my life happy. And I have to also be happy for him. No, so. I was having wet eyes over like a couple we've never met. <laughs> I have dedicated nine years of my life to this show. I know. Don't minimize know. this for me, okay? Oh, I'm not minimizing. You were you were one of the first on the case. Sometimes I think you're the one who leaks it. When you told me that, <laughs> it was really early in the game when there was like no news on it. But I do think there's absolutely people in the family who it's are leaking Peyton. the info. It's Peyton Brown. Peyton Brown is the leak. He knows he is. Peyton, if you hear this, you are a little too obsessed with the fame of this all. Guys, that could be a Patreon episode. My connection with Peyton Brown, okay? Yeah, let's save that for there. Okay. Also, because I don't want that public facing. I don't care. He, everything about his life is public facing. He's obsessed with the attention. And I don't I don't agree with it. Keep things for Christine to herself. I think she had to announce it a little earlier than she wanted to because it was going to get out anyways. But also, did you know that Christine and Janelle are apparently in talks with a production company to get their own spinoff? It's the same production company that does Sister Wives. So they think it's going to go through because the fan, the fans want it so bad. TLC knows this. They know that the show Sister Wives has to end, but they want to keep their money like going. And they think that Christine and Janelle are more willing to work with the same production crew because they're very comfortable with this kind yeah. of whole process. Mary's out. Christine's out. Janelle's out. The show has one more season because of contractions. Gee, contractions. Oh, <laughs> they contracts. just have to. They just have to. They have to birth one more season. Do you think people want to watch Cody and Robin for a whole season like by themselves? No. The show continuing on. Do people really want to do that? People love to hate watch them, but I think they can't have the show Sister Wives without any Sister Wives, right? I think Mary's taking a step back, and I think she's just going to continue to scam people for Lululemon online, and that's fine. That's her journey. We love that for her. She's got. Hey, we all know she's got that in and the girls have to keep the in the bed and breakfast booked i think <laughs> that the only viable characters here are christine and know. janelle and not only do we love these women we love these kids and i think it's time to pass a torch away from the moms as much as we love christine and janelle these children have a lot of stories to tell they are in their mid-20s they are starting their own families they're dating they're married and i, I want to know more about them and I think I speak for the masses of Sister Wives community that we're excited for this new step. We're excited for the new shows. And we're really happy. Um, I don't see this happening for Janelle anytime soon. I think Janelle just needs a moment to be by herself. She seems really happy being a grandmother, really happy with the dogs. And I don't know if she's as on the hunt for love as Christine has always been. Yeah, she, she has adamandeve.com. She's good. Get the hell out of here. Janelle, I think, just was like, 
always the smartest. I'm sorry she has. And if you know, you know, Janelle's just like the smartest woman in the cast. I think she's just like, okay, I'm no longer going to be disrespected by a man on TV anymore. Like I'm too grown for this. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to hear more about her life too, but I don't foresee that relationship happening. I think Mary is going to have someone very soon because that girl is always itching for a catfish. Um, <laughs> enough about that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm rambling now. I love you, Christine. I love you, David. And um, and home cafes. We <laughs> love your home cafes. We should send some nice ice to Christine and David as a relationship. Oh, I love that gift. idea. What a, <laughs> what a nice gift. What song's been stuck in your head all week? <laughs> Welcome to Camp Songs. My love has come along. Anyways, this is song <laughs> of the week. That was good. I was giving vocal range. You were giving something. I was giving falsetto and I was giving bass because I'm all about that bass. Okay. This is the part of the episode where we just share with you campers what songs have been stuck in our heads all week. What are we humming? What are we drumming? What are we not whistling? Clearly. And you can find <laughs> these songs on a collective playlist for free on Spotify in the link description. Um, I mean, the episode description and also on a free playlist that Jonathan curates every single week for you guys on YouTube. It's a really fun listen if you want to have all these songs curated in one place. Jonathan, will you take us away? Take us on a sonic journey to the music that you're loving. I want to hear it, baby. Take me there. A sonic journey. I love that. I love yeah. that you just said that. And I ain't talking about the drive through Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my song is based on the experience that you gave me on my last day of my 20s. The oh. song that has been stuck in my head is Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. So this song actually is older than I thought that it was. This, you're familiar? I'm not. Can, okay. I don't want to be annoying, but can you, can you give us a couple and of And I said, what about um, breakfast, breakfast at Tiffany's? Tiffany's? She said, I think I remember, remember the film and as I recall. I, I do love that. That song's definitely old. I'm, that's giving 94. So it actually came out in 93 <laughs> by Deep Blue Something. And you, you're, you're born. Yes. Oh my God. That's like a whole, sorry. That's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sonic. It's sonically amazing. And uh, they actually re-released it in like 1995 where it really gained popularity. I don't know. I think they were trying to, it didn't do well the first time. So then the second time, they I, I don't know, but they re-released it again. And then it kind of was their own demise because they ended up becoming like a one hit wonder. So all these radio stations started playing it. Like it would be like the first song that they would play in the morning and people were loving it in the 90s, the mid 90s and the, and the late 90s. And uh, because it had breakfast in the title, obviously. But then they just couldn't pull through with another song that could top it. They just couldn't, they couldn't do it. That annoys me though, because I feel like it's nobody's fault if you're a one-hit wonder other than yourself, baby. Like, think how many people, every artist's career starts as a one-hit wonder. You know what I mean? Every artist has, technically their first song is a one-hit wonder. Push, push bastard, babe. I think the... The 90s, but more specifically the 80s, were just so many one-hit wonders. Like, you know all the words. You don't know what the people look like. And you just, like, have no clue about the band or anything. Like, this song, I couldn't tell you what they look like until I watched the music video today where they actually had, like, a, a table set up outside of the Tiffany's that we sat at. Oh, was it a cute video? I haven't seen it. it it's okay. It's okay. You can tell that they're, like, filming in Manhattan and nothing's blocked off, so everyone in the background's gawking, and it's, like, a butler, and he's serving them breakfast outside of Tiffany's. It's fine. That's the song is good. I like that song, though. I don't yeah. really know a lot of the words, but it's like a... Mm -hmm. I like it. It's good. The song was actually... So it's a true story that the guitarist wrote, but it wasn't about um, Breakfast at Tiffany. So the song itself is like this couple who has nothing in common and they're like, well, we both liked this movie Breakfast at Tiffany's and that's the one thing we got. But it was actually about Roman Holiday that Audrey Hepburn is in. Oh, cute. Which I think is interesting. And they were like, well, Breakfast at Tiffany sounds cuter and it'll fit with the melody a little it better. Does. It does. Yeah. I said, what about... Roman, Roman holiday. holiday. No, it's not giving. Yeah. Breakfast at Tiffany's good. Giving. Did you see Roman Holiday? I don't think you saw I Roman Holiday. I don't. And it's a movie I'm embarrassed to admit that I've never seen. I feel like That's it's okay. a movie I would like to see. So if you want to put that on this week, I will watch it. The end. We watched it on the plane when we were coming back from um, Bali. Don't, don't tell me the end. Well, I'm not going to tell you the end. But oh, okay. I was sitting there like having one of those cries where I'm like, I'm on a plane. I shouldn't be crying. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you. I've seen you sob. To love on the spectrum on a plane. Oh, that was bad. Let's 
go fly. You guys know that scene from season two? The let's go fly a kite from Love on the Spectrum. It hit me There's a camper out there that's like, bitch, I know the fucking scene. It It is so cute. It's really cute. And the same with, I think it was probably the alcohol and the exhaustion from the day. But Little Shop of Horror and the altitude, because we were in row M. (laughs) When we saw Little Shop of Horrors, when it was like, nobody should be crying at this point. And I was streaming down my face. And I was like, I know that the person behind me is looking at me because I can see them. And I'm like, how do I casually wipe these away? I don't know. I just get emotional. Yeah, you you love what you love. And I love that about you. Mm. I was not crying at the delivery of the ending of that movie, that play. I looked at you and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I absolutely hated that mm. book, that play. But that's my my song of the week. That's I my love camp that. song. That's a great song to drive around to. It is. That's like a good errand song. I honestly forgot it existed until I needed a song to put on my... Uh, on my Instagram story. Oh yeah. And that's yeah. the song that I chose. So Cute. that's my camp song. What's your camp song? My camp song is a new song that just came out this week. You guys, as a lot of you do know, I love Lana Del Rey. Mm. She's probably my favorite artist of all time. I listen to her music every single week, most days of the week. And she came out with a new song. It's called a and W. Okay. It's going to be off of her new album called, did you know there's a tunnel under um, ocean Boulevard? Something like that. It's uh, she, the one thing about that girl. She loves to have fun with words. Um, so this song is seven minutes and 14 seconds of pure magic okay so i don't want to give a lot of the songs away because the way that i had heard it was last tuesday i was cleaning the house you were ferociously editing this podcast to make sure that campers got it on wednesday morning and i thank you for that and i was like how can i contribute and you looked at me and said zach you can't hold the fucking mouse with me so i said (laughs) okay i will clean the house so i cleaned the house and i was listening to the song for the first time and the first Half of the song, like three minutes and 30 seconds. It's very classic new Lana. It's kind of wordy, kind of folky, a lot of vocal runs, some play on words, and I'm really enjoying it, right? Halfway through the song, because it's seven minutes, right? This The beat changes. It's getting a little new age. It's getting a little trap. It's getting exciting. And I was like, where, where is this going? And then she hits you with essentially a different song completely in the middle of the song that has started so differently, right? It's giving to me very Billie Eilish mix up, right? It's like just so sonically exciting to me that I was in the middle of cleaning and I stopped and I gasped. I heard you gasp. I couldn't, I was paralyzed because it was just so exciting. And there's this really great like little intro um, clip from a Pitchfork article about it. And I want to read it for you guys. Here's every iteration of Lana Del Rey we've ever seen, each one cracking open to reveal another guise. We have the Norman era Lana into the ultra violence nihilistic Lana, into the chemtrail era folk Lana, into after the song's tense, draw-dropping switch-up, the bratty, half-rapping, trap-loving Lanas of Born to Die, Honeymoon, and Lust for Life. Mm -hmm. They come alive. They do. It is just so exciting for me to listen to. I've listened to it so many times. It's definitely going to be my Spotify wrapped, which it needs to be and i'm just really itching for this new album because the last one i didn't love what was the last album uh blue banisters blue banisters was not it for me i did love chemtrails norman norman fucking rockwell is my favorite album of hers of all time but this feels like old lana yeah in an exciting way um that article wraps up in another great thing i'm going to read um lana has always operated with a kind of creative abandon seemingly at odds with conventional wisdom but a and w might be the ultimate expression of that wildness chimeric haunting folk trap ballad welded together with nothing but the heat of her own star power wow she just like put all of her like different styles into one song and it's exciting a and W is a reference to that like chain restaurant that's alum. Like I think like yeah, the root beer. Yeah, well they have like a they have like a fast food restaurant. Mm-hmm. I've never been to one. Yeah, they it's, have them in in Illinois. Yeah, it's Midwest kind of to, yeah. to, to kind of to the West Coast over there. It's a reference to that, and also A and W in the song stands for American Whore, which was the initial title of this the the track, but they changed it to A and W. All I'm going to say about this song is, as if I hadn't said a lot, the last thing I'm going to say about the song is Jimmy Jimmy Coco Puff. Yes. Jimmy Jimmy Coco Puff. Fuck me up with this new Lana. I'm obsessed. This, like, when you made me listen to it, let me just say, we were listening to it on the TV. And as soon as, not even joking, like, the beat's about to drop, 
it just shut down completely. The and Wi-Fi. Then the Wi-Fi is done. We couldn't listen to it. And you were really upset. And I was upset too because I felt it. I was like, ooh, something's coming. Something's coming. And literally right then and there, it stopped. So we had a transition to his laptop to finish the song as the moment of all pinnacle moments of this song is happening. It is really good though. I can definitely hear all, all eras of her in that one song. It's I'm excited for her new album. Yeah, yeah, if you're not a lot of fan, you're gonna be like, okay. But if you are, you're gonna be like, okay. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people who listen to this are probably a lot of fans, yeah? Yeah, I would hope so, but you don't have to be. I still love you. Scary stories around the campfire. The scariest story of all time. Me standing in Central Park about to shit myself. I can't think of a scarier story. Anyways, welcome <laughs> to Scary Stories Around the Campfire. This is the part of the show where we tell listeners submitted scary stories. They can be scary. They can be embarrassing. Either way, they invoke some sort of emotion that causes stress. If you have any stories, funny or scary, please send them into campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Our lovely Counselor Jonathan is going to read us this week's story. Is it a good one? It's a good one. Take it away, honey bunny. So this listener wrote in and she says, good morning, camp counselors. And she just cuts right to it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Several years back at a former workplace, I worked for a swell guy we'll call Dan. There was only three of us that worked in the office, me, Dan, and Tom, the maintenance guy. Dan wasn't always the best working on a computer, more of an old school guy whom I would helped quite often with online grant submissions. You know something about that. I've done that professionally. Dan also liked to work under the gun and submit his work right up to the deadline, something I, in my anxiety, cannot handle. On such an occasion where we had a Friday 3 p.m. deadline, Dan had me working all day to submit his online grant. The computer kept crashing, resulting in starting over several times during the course of the day. A few days prior to this, I had cleaned my phone out of photos and sent what needed to be deleted to the recycling bin. It was a work phone that had some photos that needed to be stored on the computer. So she's taking her work phone that has her photos and she's sending some some shit to her work computer. And yes, without realizing, I had sent a topless photo of myself to the recycling bin and there it sat. Can I ask a question? Question? Why is she taking topless photos on her work phone? That's a question that I wish would be answered. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Back to submitting our grant that Friday afternoon. I completed the entire grant with little time spared and clicked something and it all disappeared. I panicked and called Dan into my office to tell him of my despair. When he stood behind me looking at my computer, he suggested, go look in the recycle bin. Sure, I said, and opened it up. To, you guessed it, a photo of me topless. Oh my God. He just said, oh my God, and walked away. <laughs> oh no, poor Dan. I proceeded to make my way out of the office to the bathroom where I promptly laid on the floor, horrified to go back. It's only like three people it's her and this other guy and then a maintenance guy who are working in this office like what do you how do you come back from that hey dan i'm so sorry about that anyways i have not located it and we missed the deadline <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not gonna have a job anyway um so i went back to the office and submitted the grant online and then i went to his office and pretended like nothing happened i said good night have a good weekend how was i supposed to go back into work on monday my boyfriend suggested that I walk straight into his office Monday morning and say, I need to get something off my chest. LOL, pun intended. <laughs> That's literally what it says. <laughs> um, I just came back to work and pretended it never happened. Moral of the story, clean out that recycling bin. Sincerely, flustered female executive assistant. Girl, don't take nudes on your work phone. I know. She's like, I'm sorry, I had a better camera. I know. Um, that's hysterical. I would have, how would you have approached that if you were going to walk back in on Monday? Would you have ignored it or would you have confronted it head on and gone into his office? Probably just ignored it. I can't handle that. I hate that. I would have gone in and been like, hey, that I'm, was bad. I know you saw the piece of good deal, but. I know you saw my cuckola. So my old, this company that I worked for. A while ago, the the CEO was not I'm, I wasn't his biggest fan, but he was like an older guy. And I was talking to him and he had his laptop open and it was just full on, full on porn on his lap, the CEO. And I, I was like talking and 
I don't know if he didn't know or if he was that much of a psychopath because he absolutely had psychopathic like tendencies. It's that one because I feel like you've talked about him a lot to me and I feel like he was just like that kind of guy to be like, hey, I'm the CEO. I can get away with it. You know? Yeah, we had like a full conversation about a production that I was working on and I was like, we, this is, we're just, this, it's here. It's there. Yeah, first of all, how about you cl clock into Excel for a minute and do your job? Right, sicko. just open a tab, please, dear God. But yeah, that's, uh, that's embarrassing. Maybe don't take nudes on your work phone. Love you, and I love Dan. <laughs> well, I think that's all we have for this week's episode, mm -hmm. campers. But if you can't get enough of these two gay counselors, please <laughs> check out our Patreon and search Camp Counselors for more exciting bonus content coming your way. There's already a bunch up there, and it's already a lot of fun. Yes, that's patreon.com slash camp counselors. And it also really helps us out if you haven't already given us a five-star rating and review on either Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever you listen to us on. It really helps us out on the back end. And yeah, with that being said, Lights, lights out, out, campers. campers.